It sounds like the plot of a science fiction movie, a Russian weapon system launched into space with the ability to target and destroy enemy satellites. Russia is trying to make it a reality, according to US officials who say they've been tracking developments for months. Russia developed a new weapon to shoot down U.S. and European missiles. In recent developments, Russia has been making headlines with its groundbreaking advancements in nuclear weaponry, causing a wave of fear and concern in the United States, from the S-500 Prometheus air defense system's ability to shoot down hypersonic targets to the potential deployment of a nuclear-capable anti-satellite weapon. We will uncover the facts and shed light on the escalating tensions between these two superpowers. Nuclear Weapons Three sources familiar with the matter tell NBC News Russia is developing a space-based nuclear weapon designed to target U.S. satellites. In a stunning display of military prowess, Russia has developed a new weapon that has sent shockwaves through the international community. The Russian military recently conducted tests of the highly advanced S-500 Prometheus air defense system, showcasing its remarkable capability to shoot down hypersonic targets. This groundbreaking achievement has raised eyebrows and intensified concerns among the unit States and its European allies. During these tests, the 500 system demonstrated its unparalleled ability to intercept and destroy hypersonic aerial targets. These targets include prospective Western hypersonic missiles, combat units of intercontinental ballistic missiles, guided warheads, and even short range ballistic missiles. The Russian authorities attribute the system's success to its powerful radars, electronic computing systems, and highly maneuverable anti aircraft missiles. As an example of the S 500's capability, it is worth mentioning the successful interception of an intercontinental ballistic missile launched from the Tula nuclear-powered submarine of the Russian Northern Fleet in the Laptev Sea. This test not only showcased the system's effectiveness, but also solidified Russia's position as a formidable force in the realm of air defense. The S-500 Prometheus air defense system has not only impressed with its remarkable capabilities, but has also raised eyebrows with its alleged serial production. Russian Deputy Prime Minister Yuri Borisov made a bold claim, stating that the S-500 system is already in serial production, further solidifying Russia's commitment to bolstering its military might. The Russian authorities have been working tirelessly to develop a new generation of anti-aircraft missile systems, and the S-500 is at the forefront of this endeavor. The system is expected to apply the principle of separate resolution of tasks for the destruction of both ballistic and aerodynamic targets, making it a versatile and formidable weapon. In addition to its land based applications, there are also plans to develop a naval version of the S-500 anti-aircraft missile system, including its installation on the Storm Aircraft Carrier Project. This expansion of capabilities demonstrates Russia's commitment to maintaining a strong defense posture across various domains. Also, in a shocking revelation, it has come to light that Hezbollah, in collaboration with the Iranian Revolutionary Guard, is training Russian operators of Iranian-made UAVs, unmanned aerial vehicles, in Syria. These operators are being prepared for the ongoing war against Ukraine, escalating tensions in the region to unprecedented levels. The main intelligence directorate of the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine has disclosed that these training sessions are taking place at the Syrian airfield of Sherat. Lebanese Hezbollah, police, and Iranian Revolutionary Guard personnel are conducting the training, imparting their expertise to Russian operators. The training course focuses on the development of UAVs, such as the Shahed-136 and Ababil-3, as well as the use of remote-controlled aircraft. One of the key figures leading these military exercises is Kamal Abu Sadiq, a Hezbollah commander with specialized knowledge in the manufacture and maintenance of drones. It is worth noting that instructors from the no longer existing Wagner Group, who were previously stationed in Belarus, are actively participating in the training of Hezbollah fighters. This collaboration aims to convey the experience of conducting military operations in Ukraine, including assault operations by small groups, battles in urban areas, and the utilization of kamikaze drones and shock UAVs. Additionally, as tensions continue to escalate, Russia has taken a bold and unprecedented step in fortifying its defenses. Reports have emerged of the construction of a massive 30-kilometer defense line using over 2,000 railway cars. This engineering marvel poses a significant obstacle to advancing troops and has far-reaching implications for both sides of the conflict. The construction of this formidable defensive structure began in July 2023, utilizing rolling stock stolen from temporarily occupied territories. The continuous construction stretches along the branch line from the railway station in Olenka to Volnovaka, creating
a solid wall that presents a daunting challenge for any military force. This 30 km line of defense, built with a high roadbed in some sections, acts as a full-fledged defensive shaft. Overcoming this obstacle would require extensive engineering work, including the disengagement or removal of wagons. The movement of equipment through such a blockage without breaking through a corridor is virtually impossible. The effectiveness of this defensive line is difficult to assess, as it represents a unique engineering structure. Not only does it create problems for advancing Ukrainian troops, but it also poses logistical challenges for the Russians themselves. Maneuvering and supplying advanced positions can become increasingly difficult due to this formidable barrier. While the construction of this defense line presents challenges for both sides, it also highlights the determination of the Russian military to establish a robust line of defense. The sheer mass of metal and the intricate nature of the railway cars make damaging or moving the structure a daunting task. Now, the tensions between the United States and Russia have reached a critical point, with the Biden administration issuing a stern warning to the Russian government. The warning specifically addresses the potential deployment of a nuclear-capable anti-satellite weapon, a movie that has raised alarm bells in Washington and beyond. U.S. officials have confirmed that the Biden administration has directly warned Russia against deploying such a weapon. The warning is part of a broader diplomatic push, which includes urging other countries, such as India and China, to weigh in directly with Moscow on this matter. The urgency of the situation was propelled to public prominence by a cryptic statement from House Intelligence Committee Chairman Mike Turner. Turner's statement referred to a serious national security threat, further fueling concerns about Russia's military advancements. White House National Security Communications Advisor John Kirby shed some light on the nature of the concern, stating that it is related to a space-based anti-satellite capability being developed by Russia. However, Kirby emphasized that the capability has not yet been deployed and does not pose an immediate threat to American citizens. If Russia were to deploy a nuclear-capable anti-satellite weapon, it would be in violation of the 1967 Outer Space Treaty. This international agreement prohibits the placement of weapons of mass destruction, including nuclear weapons, in space. Both the United States and Russia are signatories to this treaty, along with more than 130 other countries. While the immediate threat may not be imminent, the United States continues to closely monitor Russia's activities. The Biden administration has made it clear that it takes this matter very seriously and will remain vigilant in ensuring the security and stability of space. The development of new nuclear weapons by Russia carries significant implications and potential consequences that reverberate throughout the international community. As tensions continue to rise, the world watches with bated breath, aware of the potential ramifications of these advancements. The development of new nuclear weapons by Russia poses a direct challenge to global security. It raises concerns about the balance of power and the potential for an arms race, as other nations may feel compelled to respond in kind. The delicate equilibrium that has been maintained for decades is now at risk of being disrupted. The implications of Russia's new nuclear weapons extend beyond global security. The neighboring regions, particularly Eastern Europe, are on high alert as they grapple with the potential consequences of these advancements. The delicate balance of power in the region is now under threat, leading to increased tensions and potential conflicts. The development of new nuclear weapons introduces an element of uncertainty into the equation. It raises questions about the intentions and motivations of Russia, as well as the potential for miscalculations and misunderstandings. The concept of deterrence, which has played a crucial role in maintaining stability, is now being put to the test. The United States, as a global superpower, is closely monitoring Russia's actions and assessing the appropriate response. The Biden administration has made it clear that it will not tolerate any threats to national security or the security of its allies. Diplomatic efforts, alliances, and strategic partnerships will play a crucial role in navigating this complex and potentially volatile situation. The development of new nuclear weapons by Russia has far-reaching implications for the future of international relations. It challenges the existing norms and treaties that have governed atomic disarmament and non-proliferation efforts. The world now faces a critical juncture where the choices made by nations will shape the course of history. Russia and History of Weapons Russia has a long and storied history when it comes to weapons development. From the early days of nuclear physics, research to the modern arsenal of nuclear, biological and chemical weapons, Russia has been at the forefront of military technology. In the early 20th century, Russia embarked on a journey of scientific exploration that would revolutionize the world of nuclear physics. It all began in 1921 with the establishment of the Radium Laboratory, which would later become the renowned Klopin Radium Institute. This institution, operating under the Academy of Sciences, became a hub for 
groundbreaking research and discoveries. In 1933, a pivotal event took place in Leningrad, the first nationwide conference on nuclear physics. This conference brought together brilliant minds from across the country to exchange ideas and share their findings. It was a momentous occasion that showcased Russia's growing interest and expertise in the field. But it was in 1939 that the world witnessed a true breakthrough. Yakov Zeldovich, Yuli Karaton, and Alexander Lepunsky made a groundbreaking discovery that would change the course of history. They proved that a nuclear fission chain reaction in uranium was not only possible, but could be harnessed for various applications. This revelation opened up a world of possibilities and set the stage for Russia's future advancements in nuclear technology. The momentum continued in 1940 when Konstantin Petrashak and Georgi Flyarov, researchers at the Radium Institute, made yet another astonishing discovery. They found that heavy nuclei could undergo spontaneous fission without the need for neutron bombardment. This finding was a testament to the ingenuity and dedication of Russian scientists pushing the boundaries of scientific knowledge. These early developments in nuclear physics laid the foundation for Russia's future advancements in weapons technology. The discoveries made by Zeldovich, Kariton, Lepunsky, Petrzak, and Flyorov would serve as the building blocks for the country's nuclear program. It was through their pioneering work that Russia would emerge as a formidable force in the world of nuclear weapons. The 1940s marked a turning point in Russia's weapons development as the military's nuclear project propelled the emergence of the nuclear industry. It all began on September 28, 1942, when the State Defense Committee issued a classified decree number 2352SS on the organization of work on uranium. This decree, shrouded in secrecy, laid the groundwork for the future of Russia's nuclear industry. In 1943, the National Research Center Kuchatov Institute, then known as Laboratory of Measuring Instruments No. 2, was established under the USSR Academy of Sciences. At its helm was the brilliant scientist Igor Kuchatov, who would play a pivotal role in shaping the future of Russia's nuclear program, was established on August 20, 1945, with the sole purpose of overseeing the work on uranium. This committee became the driving force behind Russia's nuclear industry, ensuring the nation's progress in this critical field. During this period, remarkable achievements were made that would forever change the course of history. In 1946, a momentous breakthrough occurred. A self-sustained nuclear chain reaction in uranium was achieved in the F1 reactor in laboratory number two. This reactor, the first of its kind in the USSR and in Europe, showcased Russia's pioneering spirit and technological prowess. The year 1949 marked another significant milestone as the USSR conducted its first successful nuclear weapon test. This test solidified Russia's position as a nuclear power, joining the ranks of a select few nations with such capabilities. The following years saw further advancements, culminating in the test of the first Soviet thermonuclear bomb in 1953. These achievements demonstrated Russia's commitment to pushing the boundaries of weapons technology. The nuclear industry in Russia played a crucial role, not only in defense, but also in the civilian sector. One notable development was the construction of nuclear submarines, such as the Leninsky Komsomol, which became the first Soviet nuclear submarine in 1958. These submarines, equipped with nuclear propulsion systems, showcased Russia's technological prowess and its ability to project power on a global scale. Furthermore, the use of nuclear energy in power generation and other areas of the national economy became a focus of the nuclear industry. In 1954, the world's first nuclear power plant, Obninsk NPP, was put into operation, marking a significant milestone in Russia's pursuit of harnessing nuclear energy for peaceful purposes. This was followed by the operation of the world's first nuclear icebreaker, Lenin, in 1959, further showcasing Russia's commitment to utilizing nuclear technology in various sectors. The nuclear industry in Russia became a driving force for scientific research and technological advancements. Soviet atomic scientists built powerful particle accelerators and nuclear fusion facilities for research on plasma compression, among other groundbreaking projects. Their work laid the foundation for future innovations and propelled Russia to the forefront of nuclear technology. Throughout its history, Russia has been actively engaged in arms reduction treaties and agreements, working towards the goal of promoting global security and stability. These efforts have played a significant role in shaping the landscape of nuclear disarmament. One of the earliest agreements was the START-I Treaty, signed in 1991. This landmark treaty between the United States and Russia aimed to limit the number of deployed warheads to 6,000. It was a crucial step towards nuclear disarmament and set the stage for future negotiations. However, the path to arms reduction faced obstacles. The START-I Treaty, which sought further reductions, was not ratified by both parties. Despite this setback, Russia remained committed to reducing its nuclear arsenal and promoting arms control. In 2002, the
Strategic Offensive Reductions Treaty, also known as the Moscow Treaty, was passed. This treaty capped the number of warheads at 2,200, demonstrating Russia's continued commitment to arms control. It was a significant achievement in the pursuit of global security and stability. The current limitations on nuclear weapons are set by the New START Treaty, signed in 2010. This treaty, which replaced the Moscow Treaty, limits each side to 1,550 strategic nuclear warheads and 700 deployed strategic delivery vehicles. It also includes a robust verification and inspection regime to ensure compliance and transparency. However, tensions have emerged between Russia and the United States regarding compliance with these agreements. Russia has expressed concerns about the deployment of the U.S. missile defense system in Europe, which it believes undermines the strategic balance. As a result, Russia made the decision to withdraw from certain treaties, such as the Intermediate Range Nuclear Forces Treaty INF, in 2019. Despite these challenges, arms reduction remains a crucial goal for Russia. The country recognizes the importance of maintaining global security and stability through disarmament efforts. Russia continues to engage in dialogue with other nations, seeking to address concerns and find common ground. Nevertheless, Russia's history with biological and chemical weapons programs is a complex and controversial one. At its peak, Russia had the largest and most sophisticated biological weapons program in the world, a clear violation of the Biological Weapons Convention. This program employed a staggering number of people, reaching up to 65,000 individuals and conducted extensive research and development in this field. Similarly, Russia has been involved in the development and use of chemical weapons, while officially declaring the destruction of its chemical weapons stockpile in 2017, incidents such as the poisoning of Sergei and Yulia Skripal in 2018 and Alexei Navalny in 2020 have raised serious concerns about the existence of an illicit chemical weapons program. The exact number of Russia's nuclear warheads remains a closely guarded secret, but estimates suggest that it is around 5,580. Russia possesses various missile fields, submarines, and air bases to support its formidable nuclear arsenal. In recent years, Russia has been developing new weapon systems to enhance its nuclear capabilities. These include the RS-28 Sarmat intercontinental ballistic missile, known as the Satan II, and the Status-6 Ocean Multipurpose System, which is designed to create a tsunami wave and contaminate enemy coasts with radiation. President Vladimir Putin has made bold claims about Russia's possession of new classes of nuclear weapons, including hypersonic glide vehicles and nuclear-powered underwater torpedoes. These advancements demonstrate Russia's commitment to maintaining a strong nuclear deterrent. Russia's military doctrine allows for the use of nuclear weapons in specific circumstances. This includes responding to the use of nuclear or other weapons of mass destruction against Russia or its allies, as well as aggression with conventional weapons that threaten the existence of the state. This doctrine underscores Russia's commitment to answering its national security. Russia has also been involved in nuclear proliferation, transferring nuclear technology and weapons to countries like China. Additionally, after the dissolution of the Soviet Union, Russia received Soviet Soviet-era nuclear warheads from Belarus, Ukraine, and Kazakhstan, further expanding its nuclear capabilities. The Biological Weapons Program's violation of the Biological Weapons Convention and the international scrutiny surrounding Russia's chemical weapons program have raised significant concerns. Russia has signed and ratified various international treaties related to nuclear, biological, and chemical weapons, demonstrating its commitment to disarmament and non-proliferation efforts. However, incidents such as the poisoning of Alexander Litvinenko and allegations of chemical weapon use during the Russian invasion of Ukraine have raised fears of nuclear terrorism and highlighted the ongoing challenges in ensuring global security. In conclusion, Russia's history of weapons is a complex tapestry of scientific advancements, international treaties, and ongoing concerns. From the early developments in nuclear physics to the emergence of the nuclear industry, Russia has played a significant role in shaping the global landscape of weapons technology. Now, let's delve into the Ukraine war and why Russia is on everyone's radar. The war in Ukraine. The Ukraine war has been marked by intense fighting and relentless attacks that have ravaged the country for 754 days. One of the most remarkable feats in this war has been the Ukrainian air defense system's ability to shoot down Russian Shahed drones. Out of the 22 drones that targeted nine Ukrainian regions, an astounding 17 were successfully intercepted and neutralized. These drones were armed with deadly payloads, posing a significant threat to civilian lives. However, emergency services were able to evacuate residents 
and disable the drone's payloads before they could cause any harm. This display of resilience and quick thinking savored countless lives and showcased the determination of the Ukrainian forces. However, the attacks on Ukraine have not been limited to dronies. Russia has also launched seven missiles at northeastern Ukraine, specifically targeting the Sumy region. The intensity of ground and air attacks on Sumy has escalated dramatically since the beginning of the year. The regional government reports that the area has been struck over 3,000 times, a staggering increase compared to the total of 8,000 strikes in 2023. The number of aerial bomb attacks has tripled, and Russian saboteurs have been highly active, wreaking havoc and sowing fear among the population. The toll of this war on innocent civilians cannot be understated. Tragically, four people lost their lives when Ukrainian shelling hit a house in the village of Nikolskoya. This heartbreaking incident serves as a stark reminder of the human cost of the conflict. Families torn apart, homes destroyed, and lives shattered. These are the devastating consequences of the intense fighting that has engulfed Ukraine. The situation in the Sumy region is particularly dire. The area has become a primary target for Russian forces, with ground and air attacks increasing exponentially. The regional government has reported that the Sumy region has been struck more than 3,000 times since the start of the year alone. This relentless assault has left the region in ruins, with infrastructure destroyed and the lives of its residents in constant jeopardy. Russian saboteurs have also played a significant role in the escalation of violence. These covert operatives carry out acts of sabotage, further destabilizing the region and instilling fear among the population. Their actions have contributed to the heightened intensity of the war and have made the situation even more perilous for both Ukrainian forces and civilians. The Ukraine war is not just a conflict fought on the battlefield, it also has significant political and diplomatic implications. One of the most notable political events surrounding the Ukraine war was the recent election in Russia, where President Vladimir Putin secured a further six-year term. The Kremlin announced that Putin received a staggering 87% of the vote, prompting congratulations from China, India, and North Korea. However, this election has been widely condemned by Ukraine and its European allies as illegal and undemocratic. The international community closely watches the outcome of this election and its potential impact on the conflict. To mark the 10th anniversary of Russia's annexation of Crimea from Ukraine, President Putin made a brief appearance in front of a flag-waving crowd at an open-air concert on Red Square. This annexation has been deemed illegal by the majority of countries at the United Nations, and Putin's public display of celebration only adds fuel to the fire of international condemnation. In a shocking turn of events, Russia's state news agency TASS reported the detention of a 24-year-old Russian woman in Crimea. She was allegedly attempting to sabotage rail infrastructure, which plays a crucial role in transporting military equipment to the front lines in Ukraine. This revelation sheds light on the covert operations carried out by Russia and the lengths they are willing to go to maintain their military advantage. On the diplomatic front, U.S. Senator Lindsey Graham's visit to Kyiv and his meeting with Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky have garnered significant attention. The two discussed a $60 billion military aid package for Ukraine that is currently being held up by Republicans in the United States Congress. Zelensky emphasized the critical importance of approving the package, while Graham suggested that providing aid in the form of a no-interest loan might garner more support. The outcome of these discussions will have a profound impact on Ukraine's ability to defend itself against Russian aggression. Also, the Ukraine Defense Contact Group, consisting of approximately 50 countries from around the world, continues to stand with Ukraine and provide the support it needs to defend its people and reclaim its sovereign territory. This global coalition has committed over $87 billion in security assistance to Ukraine since the start of the war. It is worth noting that 15 U.S. allies contribute more to Ukraine's capability needs as a percentage of their gross domestic product than the United States itself. The European Union has also ratified an agreement to increase its support for Ukraine's armed forces by 5 billion euros, 5.44 billion, through a dedicated assistance fund. This financial aid will bolster Ukraine's defense capabilities and help counter the aggression from Russia. As the political and diplomatic landscape continues to evolve, the world watches with bated breath. The decisions made by world leaders and the actions taken on the international stage will have far-reaching consequences for the future of Ukraine and global security. According to South Korea's defense minister, North Korea has shipped approximately 7,000 containers of weapons to Russia for use in Ukraine since July of last year. These transfers have been conducted both by sea and rail, bypassing the UN sanctions imposed on both countries. This revelation is deeply concerning, as it demonstrates the willingness of rogue nations to fuel the conflict and exacerbate the violence. The Council of the European Union has responded to this alarming development by ratifying an agreement to increase its support for Ukraine's armed forces. A dedicated 
Dedicated Assistance Fund of 5 billion euros, 544 billion, has been established to provide Ukraine with the necessary resources to defend itself against Russian aggression. This financial aid will play a crucial role in strengthening Ukraine's defense capabilities and safeguarding its sovereignty. Germany and Poland have also stepped up their efforts to support Ukraine's defense. During a visit to Warsaw, Germany's Defense Minister Boris Pistorius announced plans for joint collaboration in producing more ammunition for Ukraine. While specific details were not disclosed, this partnership signifies a commitment to bolstering Ukraine's military capabilities. The support from Germany and Poland underscores the international community's determination to stand with Ukraine in its fight against Russian aggression. The United States has been a key ally in Ukraine's defense, providing substantial support to counter the influx of weapons. Through presidential drawdown authority and the Ukraine Security Assistance Initiative, the U.S. has contributed over $44.2 billion in security assistance to Ukraine. This assistance includes a wide range of equipment, such as air defense systems, radar systems, artillery systems, tanks, helicopters, ground combat and support vehicles, unmanned aerial systems, missiles, rockets, and millions of rounds of small arms ammunition. However, the support goes beyond just equipment. The U.S. and its partners have also played a crucial role in training Ukrainian service members. Over 123,000 Ukrainians have received training at more than 80 locations worldwide. The U.S. alone has trained 19,000 Ukrainian service members, equipping them with the necessary skills to effectively utilize the provided equipment and defend their homeland. The international community's commitment to Ukraine's defense is evident in the Ukraine Defense Contact Group, which consists of approximately 50 countries from around the world. This global coalition has come together to ensure that Ukraine has the capabilities it needs to defend its people from Russian aggression and reclaim its sovereign territory. The collective resolve of this historic coalition is demonstrated by the commitment of over $87 billion in security assistance to Ukraine since the start of the war. Nevertheless, the ongoing conflict in Ukraine poses a significant threat to global security. The war has exposed the vulnerabilities of the international order, as well as the potential for aggression and destabilization by powerful nations. The actions of Russia in annexing Crimea and fueling the conflict have challenged the principles of sovereignty and territorial integrity that underpin the stability of nations worldwide. The war in Ukraine has also strained diplomatic relations between nations. The international community has been divided in its response to the conflict, with some countries condemning Russia's actions and providing support to Ukraine, while others have taken a more cautious approach. This division has created tensions and highlighted the complexities of navigating a resolution to the conflict. The urgency for a resolution to the Ukraine war cannot be overstated. The prolonged conflict has resulted in immense human suffering, with countless lives lost and communities torn apart. The toll on civilians, particularly women, children, and the elderly, has been devastating. It is imperative that the international community comes together to find a peaceful and sustainable solution that will bring an end to the violence and allow for the rebuilding of shattered lives. The resolution of the Ukraine war is not only crucial for the well-being of the Ukrainian people, but also for the preservation of global security. The conflict has demonstrated the potential for escalation and the destabilizing effects it can have on neighboring regions. A peaceful resolution is essential to prevent further spillover of violence and to restore stability in the region. Thanks for watching. Click on the videos on your screen for similar content.